So here I am doing the podcast, episode six. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and not call it the Real Talk podcast because it just doesn't it doesn't roll off the tongue. A Real Talk podcast. I'm gonna stick to the Louise Twenty One podcast. Not that that's really easier to say, but that's what I was going for over the last few years, having made like forty seven of them. Don't be thinking I always made five podcasts. No, I mean, it was like 47 of them I've done. Baby, I, I wanted you to be Inside my arms Where the night goes down And we are live. What is up, YouTube? What is up, my friends, my family, whoever else? is out there watching stick a like on the video subscribe you know all the all the usual things that the average youtuber will ask at the beginning of a video you know um but yeah a lot of my videos lately have been well it hasn't been me talking about the everyday things it's just been me reacting to stuff you know a bit of a facade put on for the videos, you know, playing a bit of a, um, you know, character, if you like. Um, well, I don't know, really. I kind of am just myself on there, but, like, you know what I mean? It's different to just me talking about life, like I've always done and always seem to do. Um, so, anyway, today, I thought, why not just go back to the podcast? Okay, guys, so what I really was going to talk about is the whole Harry Kane leaving Tottenham situation, which has been a shit show, literally. It's been a nightmare as a Spurs fan in some ways, and in other ways, like, he's got to move on, time to move on. Like, you got, like you got to be happy for the guy. But still, like, the season we've had like, justifies him leaving. It's been terrible, and I feel like this whole discussion about him staying started a year ago, maybe. Um, the, you know, you've heard rumours and rumblings about, like, the discussions going on. How Levy said to him, look, we're going to win a trophy this year. We're going to bring Mourinho, you know. We're going to try and win. Give Mourinho a full season, which they didn't. We got to a final, we lost it. Um, you know, but really think about Harry Kane like from 2018 when we lose that Champions League final you know um, from that moment you're thinking okay this guy he's going to move on he's going to get fed up eventually and yes he loves the club we love him he's been a great Spurs player but like so many others he's gone on to win trophies at other clubs or going on to um, and he's been played with injuries we know but still the greatest player um, in a long time we've had at Spurs. We had goal scorers that scored a lot of goals, Defoe, you know. Um, we've had players like Bale, Modric. Of course, Bale's back, but like, I'm not going to get into that because that was a bit of a flop. As excited as we all were for Gareth Bale, it didn't really help. <laughs> it didn't really help. Like, yeah, he got a few goals, but nah. He, he can go back to Madrid, I don't care. Uh, I've got respect for him, yeah, but stick to playing golf, mate. But yeah, back to Harry Kane, I mean, just a legend, like one of the best in the world. And obviously maybe when he was at Tottenham, a lot of fans that don't like us would just be like, oh yeah, he's, he's alright, you know. But now he's left Tottenham, they're going to be like saying all this stuff about him that they didn't want to say before. But yeah, like we've got the stadium, we, you know, we had this player, but we didn't win. We had the manager to win, but we didn't win. What more do you want? Like they want Poch back. You know, the, the whole potential connection to getting uh, Antonio Conte is, I mean, he's a brilliant manager. And they're, but they're saying they want a softer manager. Yeah, because Mourinho wasn't soft. Not at all. Um, you know, he was 
he was supposed to get everything sorted at Spurs. But nothing did get sorted, did it? And here we are now, selling this player, taking the money, of course. But there's other players we've got to get rid of. There's a lot of players, Sanchez, um, I think Lamemba's going, because um, he's a fringe player, really. The sell side, I don't really rate, I'll be honest. Um, people like Doherty. Nah. There's players that have got to go. They've got to re revamp this team. Start from scratch, build again. Um, we're not going to find another Harry Kane. That's impossible. Um, but, like, as sad as it is, there's a future. We've got to rebuild. But we really do need a new chairman. Don't matter about all the players we're getting rid of or signing, but this guy is money grabbing, is what he is. Because, like, this is the best time to sell Kane. Don't get me wrong. I mean, so they're getting the 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 best price out of him. Because maybe a year from now the value goes down. He keeps getting injured. You know, he's getting older. All these things. But so, yeah, he's gone. He's going. There's nothing any of us can do. We we kind of felt this coming. Um, I'm glad he didn't go to United or Chelsea. Uh, obviously, City are going to just get to another level with this guy, with De Bruyne and him in the same team. And yeah, Aguero's leaving, but they're replacing him with Harry Kane. So it's not bad. It's not a bad like uh, swap. Well, except it would have been a good deal to get Aguero, you know. Imagine swapping. But yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen to my beloved Tottenham. Uh, we'll see. If we get the Wolves manager, uh, that'd be pretty good. You know, I don't want to not win trophies and play horrible football. Like we've been doing with Mourinho in some ways. You know, and he was going to win us a trophy. I say no trophies, but... He would have he would have won something. He was gonna win that final if they let him play it. He didn't play it, so here we are. Um, but yeah, sorry to rant on about football. But yeah, it, this is where well, before I said anything, I should have said skip to this point to avoid all the uh, the football talk. But there's more football talk. So yeah, um, I saw the latest. Um, well, I don't know if it's the latest film, but uh, the the Roberto Baggio movie on Netflix, The Divine Ponytail. Um, Roberto Baggio is like, if you think of Argentina and you think of Maradona, uh, that you know, that is that that kind of comparison. You think of Italy football, you think of Baggio, you know, and he was like on oh, Maradona at that time. Of course, he's famous. For the penalty he missed in the final uh, against Brazil in 1994. So my, the, it's like a movie that they made about his whole career. And it's based around that kind of moment. And him as a player. Like from a young age to the end of his career. And it's just amazing to see a film of like your favourite player. Or someone you idolise. You know, yeah, I talk about Harry Kane. How people idolise him, love him. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's one of the best and he's one of my favourites, yeah. Um, you know, Badger's on that list. There's a lot of other players. But Badger's top of the list, you know. Um, I'm still of the age to, like, know about him. Maybe some of you younger viewers might not know about him. But, yeah, if you want to know about Italian football, well, there's the maestro. Um, you know, and yeah, it's it's a brilliant um, it's a brilliant mo like motivational story because despite missing that penalty, he still goes down as one of the greatest in Italian football. Like, and you realise that it's not all about what you do on the pitch; it's about what people see you as, and people like saw him as like an idol, like I do. Um, you know, in his career especially. But, like, he's just, like, something mythical about him. I don't know. I don't know. It's something, like, 
it, you get that with some players, like something special. Maradona had it, you know. Not many players do have it though, but he's got that something special that makes him more than the player, where he means more than just what he does on the pitch. And yeah, maybe some of you don't know about football, um, or I mean, don't like football, or don't really follow football, but know of it, you know. Um, just think of the person that actually motivates you and like gets you up in like in terms of when you're feeling that lack of motivation, the person that gets you up, up and going again, basically, uh, the person you look up to, kind of. I don't know if that's the right way to describe it, but like, if there's someone you're really you're a big fan of, basically, you know, musician or whatever, and like what they do, you just look at it and just go, wow. Um, yeah, I would recommend this documentary if you're a football fan. Um, maybe if you're not, I don't. Well, I don't know. It won't have the same meaning, but you think of someone that uh, you know you, you're looking up to, and you're like thinking, "Wow, um, I want to take a page out of their book." You know, I want to emulate them in some way. And yeah, because I'm such a huge fan. It was a great movie for me. I mean, if they made a movie about your someone you idolised, then you'd, you'd love it too. So I'm a bit biased, really, to be honest. But yeah, there's some of the things I didn't even know um, about him and about his about his uh, the way he's a Buddhist. I knew he was a Buddhist, but I didn't know like how serious he was about that and how he'd been a Buddhist since his early days at Fiorentina and the difficult time of injuries he always had from the early days, not just in that famous World Cup. But anyway, enough about football. Um, you know, I'm just uh, trying to be the real me today. No memes, no jokes, no funny videos, no TikToks, just me. Um, but yeah, if you're not into football, you probably turned off by now. Um, but if you are, well, if you are into football, you're probably still here. Um, but yeah, um, another podcast. I haven't done one of these for a while. It's been a good while, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, I don't edit these really, like, I don't edit bits out that I'm saying. It's just me talking, um, you know, and people go, oh, you know, people want every video to be, like, exciting. Oh, you got to be this, you got to be that. Um, but sometimes just people want you to be yourself. And that's what I'm doing. And uh, I literally, last time I did this, I had, like, a script. I organise what I want to say, but I don't care. This time I'm just going to do it off the cuff, wing it, you know, and yeah, so things have been strange, yeah, things are opened, things are opening up, I haven't been out that much as of yet, um, no, I don't feel like it's that safe really, I do want to go to a pub at some point, um, but yeah, the Indian variant has been like making it a bit more risky, than it should be, but yeah, apparently, eventually we won't have to wear masks anymore, don't know how that's a good idea, I think that's in, I don't know what date that is, but there's a date coming up, where we don't, we no longer have to wear masks, which is ridiculous, um, and you see Dominic Cummings come out the other day and talk about all the mistakes Boris made, well we knew he made mistakes, we knew that, um, but like the extent of them, you know, uh, who knows? And like, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of people that are like, oh yeah, Boris did what he could in this pandemic. Yeah, he did in some ways. I'm not going to get into it because I'll probably lose half the audience uh, if I get into thinking, saying what I think about him. He's an absolute idiot, to be honest. 
and we'll end it there. But um, yeah, you can't say that everyone dying, uh, the amount of people that did die is his fault. But there would have been maybe less, less casualties had things gone differently. I don't know if anyone else would have had less casualties. You know what I mean? Think about it like Corbyn, it would have been a lot worse. I don't know if it would have been better. It would certainly, you can't say any other politician would have done a better job, for sure. They're, they're, all, they're all dodgy in some way. They all just want to be loved. You know, they all just want to be the best. I don't know. Well, some of them don't even care, like, just there to get the money, get the paychecks. And then they come back as the lobbyist and try and F up the whole government. <laughs> well, that's what David Cameron did. Uh, it's quite funny, really. Is that they're taking revenge against his old employers, against his own bloody country, basically. And I, d I don't know the ins and outs, I'm just saying. That's what I saw on the news. That's, you know, I, I don't dig into these things that much. And, and depends where you consume your news, really. I try and keep it, uh, like, consume news from, like, multiple sources. You know, your Russia Today is the sky. Your uh, Al Jazeera. But if you want the real facts, go to like the Reuters website or something to get the real facts on anything. Um, but yeah, when I was at uni, I did a lot of like keeping up with the news, reading articles and stuff because I had to, and I felt the need to. But now it's just like I don't care, just do my own thing. And yeah, I kind of forgot to make one of one of these podcasts because I've been busy making so many videos, just you know kicking into gear, back on that YouTube grind. Because in lockdown, I didn't have the same motivation. And yeah, I didn't stop vlogging. I didn't stop making videos, but I got lazy. I'm trying to get out of that laziness. And you think, okay, yeah, in lockdown, maybe you could have made more videos because you had more time. But I didn't feel in the right space. And besides the house was full of people. Not pe I mean, like the family was at home all the time. Didn't have the silence to do anything really, but yeah. It's strange because we're out of lockdown, but you still feel like something's missing. Um, things are getting back to normal, kind of. They'll never be normal as such with a virus like that about. It's never going to be gone completely. It'll become like a normal thing, but you get a jab for it and that's it. And you move on. Some people don't agree with the jab situation. Yeah, the government are kind of forcing you. In some situations, paying you to get it done. Um, it's the same with having tests. You've got to have tests if you're working. That's a good thing. But people think it's like the government controlling us, or maybe it is, but like, do you want to get that virus and freaking die from it? No. You know, you've got, you've got a choice. And there's a lot of scaremongering at the beginning with the first lockdowns to scare people into staying at home. But people don't care anymore. People do what they want after people don't even follow the rules. So then when you get caught out one day, someone being a Karen <laughs> and just calling you out going, Oi, where's your mask? You know, I mean, I wear a mask when I go out. If I see someone not wearing one, I'm not going to go up to them and just start a fight because they're not wearing a mask. Because, you know, I don't want, I'm not going near you. I didn't go near people before this. Like, oh yeah, now you can hug people. Hugging? That's, is that a thing anymore? Forgot the last time that was a normal thing. Like in the last two years. Yeah, it's basically two years now. But yeah. I'm going to try and keep up this whole thing of making more videos now. It might mean I do less podcasts. Um... But yeah, it's, it's, it's good just to bang out videos because I film like two or three on one day, then spend the, the, the rest of the time editing them and then I gradually release them like 
every other day, but like I've stacked the videos basically. So if I get lazy, I've got spare ones to upload, technically. Um, and the TikTok ones, they both kind of got copyrighted a bit. Copyright, like strike, not strikes. But like someone claimed some of the, the audio. So I had to cut those bits out. And hopefully they're okay now. But one of them is one of those videos is already up online. The other one's coming soon. Um, but yeah, a lot of videos, and uh, it's just that line between copyright, getting copyright claims on your videos or not. It, it is a, a difficult one because you never you never really quite quite know until you release the video. But what I do is I put it on private. So nobody can see the video and then once it's been on there for like a day if it get, doesn't get a copyright claim then i upload it basically and if you're not on youtube you wouldn't get any of that but in layman's terms um you know i upload the video every other day basically but i make loads at once it's weird then you'll see me in the same like t-shirt thinking, has he washed that? Has he been in the same clothes the whole time? When it's like the same day? Like I might film a video after this and be wearing the same hoodie and be like, hold on a minute. I mean, if you didn't realize already, like, yeah, I mean, there's YouTubers not revealing all their secrets. Um, but, you know, pe people are all obsessed with working hard on YouTube, making all these videos, Sometimes, yeah, it's the quality over quantity. So, you know, you can't just literally mass produce videos without even thinking about the layout or anything. Like, there's so many videos I can do about reacting to people having car crashes or idiots on the road. Which That video went down well and the diving fails went down well. But it's got to be stuff that literally will make me laugh because... The TikTok ones I didn't find that funny, reacting to TikToks. Depends on the TikTok. But no, the ones where people get into like epic fails, or, like accidents, they're quite funny. Or like when stuff breaks, or people fall off stuff, or animals, that's quite good. But I'm not I'm not trying to think about what makes you laugh necessarily. I'm trying to think about what gets the best reaction out of me be it horror or fear or like confusion or laughter because laughter is the best medicine and that's half of the the mission with these videos for you guys and for myself because I do enjoy filming them once more than just moaning about covid all the time like all I seem to do and it's harder to make vlogs um it's been hard to make vlogs um I've, I made a few a few weeks back or the other month, a few months back. Um, and I thought I was really going to get in the swing of it, but the weather didn't really help. And like the last few weeks, like, it's been hailstones and all that. But they say the weather will get nicer, which is good for the videos. I'm not just saying that to make conversation. Uh, it does actually help the videos. And yeah, I'm in here while the sun's out. Well, I think the sun's out. So it's a bit mental, isn't it? I might have to go out there and enjoy the weather. Um, but yeah, I'm keeping busy with the videos and editing, kind of forgetting about myself a bit, be, being dedicated to the videos. And I've done that in the past with vlogs. Don't get me wrong, but like, yeah. And like I said, people go on about working hard on YouTube, making those videos, but it's about the quality sometimes. And sometimes, you can put less effort into a video and get a better result out of it. Like I'm sitting there reacting to stuff and I'm having more fun in that video than the video where I'm talking about what's going on in my life sometimes. I'm just forgetting about all the the normal everyday stuff and laughing at a video, not trying to think too heavily. And yeah, sometimes it doesn't always make the best video. Half of the time it does, I feel like. Of the ones I've made so far, they've done well. Better than my average video. 
And yeah, you see people like PewDiePie, so effortless, just bang out a video, pay their editor, it's easy. You know, but the way he does videos is so simple and easy. The editor's pretty good, I'll be honest. They've all got editors, I'm editing my own. And yeah, my editing isn't as good as say other YouTubers on my level, if you like. But I enjoy what I'm doing and it's about you as an individual. And sometimes if people just don't like you, you ain't gonna get the views. If you're not likable, like think of any gamer that streams gaming content. It's gotta be something likable and relatable about them. Um, you know, and I'm not saying I'm a fan of Ninja or anything, I'm not at all, like he's, he's annoying, of all of them I find him annoying, but there's got to be something about you that makes you stand out, you know, and not not everyone has that, you can learn that for sure, but some people have it and some people haven't, and you know, you can have the best editors in the world, and whatever, but if people don't like you, it's, I don't know, it's a, it, it's a hard one, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm trying to work harder on the videos, but at the same, release more, but be more, have less effort involved in some ways, I'm not saying don't put the effort in, but this kind of video can be easier, I mean, the kind of video where you you know, don't plan it out too much and just react in the moment. That can be a lot better. Well, that's my opinion. You don't have to listen to my opinion. You don't have to, well, you don't have to get offended by, I mean, what's there to get offended by? But yeah, people get too offended these days. There's a lot of easily offended people. The woke people, as we call them. Yeah, and yeah. Who cares really? It's that the people, then people do what they want because it's their loss at the end of the day. And the other great news I want to mention, guys, is I'm back to Pouchier football. Well, I've had one training session. I was rusty as hell. Just getting back in that chair. It's been a while, so that was great to see everyone, to be back. Really felt like a long time away. All these people saying, oh, it's good to see you, you know, all the usual things. Good to see you back, good to be back, all that. It's great, and it felt a bit weird at the same time. Like, I don't know, like, all the attention you're not used to, because you've been stuck in your house all year. You know, oh, people, oh my God, how do I communicate? I mean, I don't have, like, actual anxiety in my life, luckily get anxious, but I don't say I have anxiety as, as a actual issue, but um, a lot of people developed it this year, uh, people I know personally, and it's difficult, there's different levels of it, there's the serious stuff where you need meds, and there's not so serious stuff where it's just a niggling thing every day that a lot of people deal with, or even dealt with before, but now everyone's aware of it because of the year we've had, the years we've had. Um, I'm certainly more aware of it, more aware of its effects and the, the gravity of it. In some cases, the seriousness, um, you know, how there's some people that are maybe a threat to others, but most people with anxiety are more likely to be a threat to themselves and they just beat themselves up a lot. But everyone's different, everyone's way of dealing with things is different and types of anxiety, there's a list, I'm not going to, not going to go into it. You know, I'm not a doctor, I'm not an expert, I'm not going to sit here and try and cure what's wrong with everyone, I try and like, you've got to find your own ways to, to deal with things, it's not me to say. But I'm just saying I've become aware of it more, I've learned a lot about it and yeah, knowledge is power really. The more you know about anything, the less risk you have of, you know, misjudging someone or just taking the wrong opinion on something. But yeah, 
I want to thank you guys. It's been different. It's been a longer format style video podcast, of course. It's me having a chat with you guys, having to catch up. Um, <laughs> said the big tomato to the little tomato. Jesus. I'm telling bad jokes all day. Like the postman that couldn't deliver. He got sacked. Buddy, I've been telling everyone that joke. It's terrible. What they call a dad joke, which I've been labelled as nowadays. Because I'm the oldest of all of my mates. But it's not a bad thing because with age you get better like a fine wine. And here we are. Um, that reminds me, I might have to drink some wine at some point. Being Italian is an everyday thing. I haven't forgotten that because I tell you what, in the lockdown I drank a lot. In the first one. God, did we drink a lot. It was good, good though. But yeah, trying to get back to the pub. Uh, Alright guys. That's enough for today. I'll see you real soon. Um, and take it easy, stay safe. Don't go being a melon. And that's it, basically. <laughs> Sound advice there. You know, be you can be other type of fruit. But don't be a melon. <laughs> Alright guys, take it easy. And I'll see you on the next podcast. Peace. Thank you.